Hello, my name is Ulster, and this is a review for you. Yes, uh, as I said, I will probably start off with the review because I just watched. Um, I just watched. Uh, what did I just watch? <laughs> War of the Planet of the Apes. Um, and this is something that I wanted to talk about because this is one of the movies that really got me, like invested from start to finish and I think I understand some people who say like oh like I didn't even need to watch the first two movies but if you watch the first two movies it it gives you more of an emotional tug like I definitely think that you needed the first movie to kind of like connect that obsession with humans that Caesar has because you know he grew up with a human you know he he was nurtured by humans so naturally you know he would want to be kind to humans because you know he want to he wants to repay that kindness that um that James Franco or his you know in, initial parent in his life um created and uh the second movie is more about you know his coming to grips with being a leader and you know him like understanding that he has to make hard choices and you know the second movie is also dealing with the conflict between mankind and the the monk the apes as well or the ape, uh the monkeys um and the third movie is uh like a full circle come back to the uh the virus because the second movie we didn't really get much on the virus we know that it's there but you know we don't know how how many it's, it has killed but in the third movie you know we do find out that you know it uh, it has killed a lot of people but it has also taken a new form and you know uh, taken away human speech and that's something of like Oh, okay. That that's something new. That's something interesting. And yes, this movie has flaws. I'm not saying that you know this movie is perfect on a uh, you know on a ten ten scale. Like no movie is perfect on a ten ten scale. Like even Whiplash, you know, it's more on the nine ten scale for me. So. Um, yeah, uh, and this movie, you know, it has a lot of Shakespeare in in here. I was really surprised. I'm like, oh, there's a lot of Shakespeare in here, <laughs> which is really cool and really interesting. But I'm just like, yeah, I don't think the 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 kids would understand because like like there was one kid in the audience that I was watching, and yes, you know, I'm later party, you know, I'm always later party, but uh, like there wasn't like a crowd in my uh, in my theater as well. It's just like one, two, three, four people. Like I could count them on my hands. So that's how small it was. Uh, but this movie is really emotional. Like there are some parts where you're like, oh, okay, this is this is really good and this is really, you know, emotional. But there are also some points where they kind of drag out the 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 runtime the padding uh but that's also to show off their visuals i would think you know because they took so much time with this and you know the visuals are so beautiful and you know um it's just so crazy and this is one of the things i was like yeah this is what the revenant did as well like um it showed the the background and everything the background is really something there and then i think for me war of the planet of the apes works better because it's cgi and you know you see the snow on the on the fur and you're like okay it's it's there you know it's not just you know a CGI puppet but you know they really took the time to kind of make sure that the the CGI, CGI monkey is in that scene so I'm like yeah it's really good you know they t really made sure that you saw the technology that went into this and I'm like yeah of course um, and so yeah it's some some points are dragged out, you know, it's not really doing anything with the story. Uh, I thought, you know, Bad Ape was was fine. 
you know, he is a funny character. He's a funny character, but he also has, you know, some mental disability because of, you know, what happened, you know, in, uh, in the beginning. And uh, this is the first monkey that can talk as well. Like, this is... Because throughout the series, you know, only Caesar can talk and, you know, he taught the others how to sign. Um, and, um, so far only, you know, only, um, uh, Caesar can talk. And this one, I think, you know, Caesar was also surprised. Like, he was like, wait, how do you know how to talk? And, you know, that is like, I learn from humans and I'm like, oh, okay. So they can learn speech. Um, but the bigger one going through this is, is the virus and the very much the coming back of the virus in an, in a mutated form, you know, taking away human speech and, you know, Woody Harrelson's, uh, character, the colon, the colonel, uh, the colonel, um, uh, is very much that person who kind of, Trill. Like, he kind of balances and, you know, tries to walk the fine line of, like, trying to be kind and also he's, you know, a strict disciplinarian. Um, I thought that he, his character was uh, pretty sad, actually. I mean, you know, it's, it's despicable that, you know, he wants to kill these people and everything, but I'm just like, yeah, I think, you know, for me, it's, it's more that he doesn't know if even if they get the the medicine and everything that they would return back to their pro proper you know their pro proper speaking selves like then something I'm like yeah that's true as well but I'm always like you know what it's not not really bad you know like they just can't talk you know they they can learn how to sign, you know, that's one of the things that was running through my mind, because I'm like, well, you know, the the apes can't really talk as well, because, like, Woody Harrelson, uh, Woody Harrelson was like, oh, you know, we're going back to the primal, primal stages of our um, ancestry, and I'm like, well, you know, these monkeys are doing sign language, you can do sign language as well, you know, it just could be a new world with sign language. But it's still gonna be you guys in charge, you know. Um, and uh, I I never watched the original nor the Tim Burton one. Um, but apparently Nova is part of the 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 Ten and the Apes lore, uh, so to say. And uh, I I thought she was doing a pretty good job, you know, compared to the girl in Ogja. Uh, she she you know, made sure the, the her wonderment was there. I'm sorry. Her wonderment was there, you know, her facial expressions was really clear. I think the direction was really good. Uh so yeah, and Andy Circus, you know, he's just doing a really good job. <clears throat> and uh, you know, uh to be honest with you, I've only watched some of the the original one. And Caesar just really reminds me of Tim Roth. Like, I'm just like, why didn't Tim Roth come back and reprise his role? Because th this is really reminding me of Tim Roth. Like, in the, the, in the, the movements and everything, you know, the way he talks. It's very Tim Roth. So, um, I don't know. Maybe Andy Serkis really channeled his inner Tim Roth. Uh, because I was just like, that's Tim Roth right there. I'm like at a lot of points and um yeah moving on to the the shakespeare um themes in this uh, you know i saw a lot of macbeth first of all because of coba uh and uh, also uh, hamlet because you know he lost his uh his, he lost his child um well i don't really remember much of hamlet but it's also some dealing with death as well so you know, but the stronger theme was Macbeth because you know he killed his 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 own friend. You know, uh, and Macbeth was always about those dream sequences uh, and you know hallucinations with his um, you know his 
friend coming back to haunt him and uh, that was really something I was like yeah this is really good use of the visuals you know when he's you know crucified so to say on that cr uh, like the X cross uh, and then I'm like yeah um, you know and then he's like that like kind of like going into a coma state kind of and then Koba comes to him and says like come sleep sleep Caesar it's time for you to sleep um, you know um, you cannot you cannot save them all and I was like no don't don't go and I and you know well I kind of knew that it was gonna go but I was like yeah you know it it makes sense that you know he's he keeps thinking of Koba because like you know he didn't really want to kill Koba you know he just like me and like everyone else I think you know we always want to find the proper middle road not just you know go the extreme in the first run you know but I think like Koba forced his hand you know and uh, he had to do it he had to kill Koba and. Uh, one of the things is that there is a MacGuffin and this there is a Deus Ex Machina. Uh, there is a there is a cliche in here. There's two cliches actually. Uh, that is very big. Um, the first one, you know, to be fair to to Ogja, I'm gonna tell you the the MacGuffin here, which is the little doll that Maurice um, gives her. But you know what? It it makes more sense than the Ogja one because um in this one it's more of Maurice and you know we see this again with uh, Luca uh, but Maurice gives her the doll you know but because he wants to assure her that he's friendly okay so so it's not really something that's just there for nothing uh, it's something that you know it's a it's a gift to assure peace you know, and uh, the second one which I was talking about with Luca was the the the, um, the flower one. You know, but that doesn't really come in. You know, it's more of an emotional um, uh, anchor because Luca dies. Uh, you know, and I'm like, yeah, kind of knew it. <laughs> um, and then uh, you know, she puts the flower on him instead because he put the flower on her first, and then uh, she put. Uh, she put it back on him because he died. Um, and the Deus Ex Machina is kind of... It, well, it, it isn't really a Deus Ex Machina as much as the um, the whole like twist in Ogja where there's a twin that doesn't even make any lick of sense. Um, but the Deus Ex Machina in here is mainly because of Caesar as well, like, I'm sorry, there's uh, sons on the back, but, um, yeah, um, there is a lot of things that uh, happened in here that I'm like, yeah, it, it's it's all really good, and this is just me kind of nitpicking, and, you know, the, the, the snow falling down the avalanche that happens is because of, you know, Caesar's fault as well, like, it, it's not really his fault, but it's like, it's it was a means to an end that he knew he he had to do because there was a flammable like uh, gas tank and you know he tried to throw the the grenade at it uh, but he couldn't and then uh, you know the the redeeming point uh, comes in as well which is the um, the big uh, gorilla ape whatever that helps um, helps uh, him out in the end you know because the the big thing in here is there's uh, like these monkeys called donkeys where like they help the humans because they were Koba's followers in the, in the second movie and then um, you know Caesar was like do you have anything to be saved and then of course you know in the end he did have something to save and then you know he got shot for it obviously um, and so yeah you know he had to he had to blow up the base and everything and the, the snow started to fall uh, and then uh, there was another group of humans that came through um, and then the um, avalanche wiped them out uh, and I'm just sitting here thinking like wait is that all the humans like what about the 
the other politicians, I'm sure they had bunkers to save themselves from the virus, or did they all get killed as well? Like, that's something I'm always thinking about, like, in these movies. But, you know, that's just me picking and, um, well, you know, this is such a good movie that I sometimes had to pull straws to nitpick. Um, so I really, I really think that this is a this is a really good movie. Like I, I'm, I'm not finding any big issues with it. Uh, not as much as I found with Okja. Um, you know, maybe it's because the the message was subtle. You know, uh, humans do need to make more compromise. You know, um, but you know we are such a people that you know we don't want change you know we don't really like change you know we're just like no nah, no nah, this this should stay the same you know and it applies for you know nostalgia properties and all that and the remakes and all that um but s some classics should be left alone and in this one they, they really show that you know they they love the they love the source, you know, they understand the source, uh, they understand the underlying themes, you know, going through this, in through this, and, um, and, um, yeah, I thought they really did a good job, um, doing it, and in the end, you know, I think Caesar knew, you know, that, um, this is something where it's a new generation and you know he he was really badly hurt and uh you know maurice tried to save him and uh caesar stopped him because uh you know he didn't really want to, to save him and uh i mean didn't really want maurice to save him you know and uh, maurice you know cried because like he knew as well like you know they don't have the medicine and they don't have the way to to kind of keep him alive and if he did I'm sure he would you know like push Caesar to accept you know some form of um, medicine or some form of band-aid at least um, but I think Caesar knew that it was his time to go and uh, he told Maurice, you know, I think it was more of a subtext, like, I think he's like, yeah, I think you can take care of everything, Maurice, and, uh, you know, if he doesn't, you know, there's still the, the third in command, uh, which is the, uh, the other monkey that, you know, also lost a, a son, and, uh, I think he didn't want to make it a royalty as well like i don't i don't really know because you know m m mainly in the animal kingdom it's very much the uh, royal royalty blood as well you know or well it's royalty blood in uh, uh human uh, uh human understanding but in the animal kingdom it's more of the alpha male uh you know passing down to the to the second alpha male and so on and so forth um, so, yeah, I really thought that was really a beautiful shot to leave off on because it's so beautiful, the hor horizon, and this is so good to see, like, the water and everything, and the, the setting sun, oh, it's, it's so beautiful, it was so great, it was so well done, um, yeah, it just leaves me to give the score on this, and I... I don't know because like everyone's gonna be on my case if I give it better than Wonder Woman, but it's honestly better than Wonder Woman because the CGI is so much better, the technology that went into this is so much better. Um, the the war scenes, you know, I thought I would be really tired of it, but well, at some points I was, but most times I was like, oh shit, like this is happening, oh my god what the fuck like you know this destruction of nature just for 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 a couple of like 
animals, you know, who who just gain sentience because of you guys, like because of us. Like I don't understand why this is happening, and you know, shit happens. And I think I just really like conflict. I just really like to relate to my characters, and there wasn't really any conflict. In one on one, it's more of just her fulfilling her destiny, and that's something I'm like, yeah, I've seen that before. So, uh, I'm going to give this a, a an eight uh, because I gave uh, Wonder Woman a seven. I I'll give this an eight. It, it deserves an eight. Uh, I hope uh, Andrew Circus um, gets nominated for the Academy once more. You know, uh, I hope he gets nominated for an Oscar. I hope the FX team, you know, the special effects team get nominated for an Oscar. I hope they get awards. I hope I hope and pray that they get the recognition that they deserve because this was fucking beautiful. Like some some visuals were CGI, but I'm like I I'm having trouble. <laughs> I'm having trouble like picking out where the CGI is, whereas in Wonder Woman, you know, you could see a little bit here, a little bit there, you know, the fight sequences and all that, but this one, no, like, this, it's just all happening, and I'm, I'm really excited to see Dunkirk now, because, you know, my, my sister said, uh, it wasn't anything special, but, you know, I definitely think, you know, to each your own, and I'm gonna watch it, and, uh, probably tell you guys as well, uh, I'm, most probably gonna do a review on Spider-Man when I watch it and uh, with my friend as well because you know he's read the comics uh, so at least that's uh, something that uh, comes into play as well and uh, a new point of view for you guys as well it's, it's just not me you know criticizing and everything so yeah guys that was about it and I will see you in the next video which is coming up really soon so please stay tuned and uh, yeah see you then